Hello and welcome to Postgrad Processing, the podcast where a recent college graduate talks about the transition from student to worker and all the feelings wrapped up in it. I'm your host, Michaela Graf, and today I'd say I'm feeling happy. We'll put it simply this week. I'm feeling happy. And you guys may be happy as well to hear that this week I finally made it to the point I've been waiting for. Are you ready? I finally had an interview for a job. I know just last week I talked about how all I've been doing is applying to jobs and how I haven't made it any further in that process, but that all changed. Actually, as I was editing last week's podcast is when I had my phone screening for this job and then set up the interview for this past Monday. So I was like, dang, I really just set that up for myself this week. So today's episode is a little bit less structured. Last week was super structured, which I liked and I hope you guys like too, but this week we're kind of going back to how I was the first episode. I just want to talk about my experience with interviewing, which is minimal, and I actually really like interviewing. I know a lot of people get to this part in the process and they're very nervous for good reason and they sort of dread it. But as for me, I personally have been waiting for this moment. This is where I was like, I feel like I can shine better in an interview than I can on paper in a job application. And that's the point of an interview, really. It's for your employer to ask you further questions about the information that you provided on your job application, but it's also for your employer to get a feel for who you are as a person. And I think and I hope that a lot of employers, at least good ones, I would say, are not only looking at does this person check all the boxes. I think I kind of said this last week when I was telling everyone to just apply to jobs even if you don't meet all the criteria, they're not only looking at what you bring to the table, they're looking at your potential. They're looking at your personality. Would you fit in well with the type of workplace that you're interviewing for? What can you bring to this role and what can they bring out of you in this role? Like for me, I don't have a lot of experience in my job field other than what I did in school. And so my portfolio can say things about me. People can look at my GPA. They can look at my coursework if I provide that. They can look at the skills I list and they can look at some of the tangible products of my work, such as videos that I've produced, podcasting that I've done, my writing, things like that. But The reason why I love an interview is because it gives me an opportunity to explain those skills further and how they're applicable to the job. And also, it just gives me an opportunity to be myself and allow the employer to see who I am as a person. And that's where I really try to play to my strengths. And it also helps that one of my strengths is communicating and in an interview it's all communication based. They're asking you questions, you're answering, and then hopefully you're also asking them questions and they're answering. And it helps that that's relevant to my field. So obviously if I'm applying to a job as a communication professional, now in an interview I can show them this is how I communicate. And so I'm hoping that's on my side. And I know for some people that's the scary part because not everyone is equipped to be a fantastic communicator. And I don't really think I am that great of a communicator yet. I think my strengths are just talking, really. (laughs) Being able to answer questions on the fly and honestly being able to carry out a good conversation is a part of communication skills. And that's where I think I shine in these interviews. And so now let me tell you about how this interview went. 
The job that I was interviewing for is in marketing, which I will be the first to say that is not necessarily my specialty. I find marketing very interesting and I have talked to friends who are in the marketing business even before I graduated and I thought, oh, what they're doing sounds kind of cool. I'm really in a spot in my career where I'm like, because I'm just starting, I don't know exactly what I want to be in and communication is a very broad field. Like, if you major in microbiology, I imagine that there's only so many tracks that you can use that in, whereas communication is in some ways a catch-all field. And I think that's why we get dunked on sometimes because it's like, you just pick that major because you couldn't decide what you want to do. And I'm like, yeah, so where's the shame in that? Because I'm getting a lot of skills. And there are some people who go into the communication major like, I want to be a journalist. And then they follow that track the whole way through. Or some people come in like, I know I want to do PR and they follow that whole track. For me, and this might be partially because I made it late to the game, I spent my two years as a communication major just trying out bits of everything. Our coursework was designed in a way that sort of made us try different things, which I really liked. You know, we were required to take certain writing classes. We were required to take theory classes, a PR class. We were required to take some audiovisual production classes. And then you can fill those in with the niches that you want to explore. I kind of explored everywhere. So now when I'm applying to jobs, I'm like, I don't know exactly what I want to do, but a lot of these things interest me. So I'm just going to apply. So that's how I ended up applying to this position in marketing, despite not having any marketing experience. I did not take any marketing classes or anything like that. I didn't even get to take a social media managing class, which I really wanted to. It just so happened that it wasn't offered, I don't think, during my senior year. So I wasn't able to take it because my junior year was focused on trying to get all the basics and all that. And so I wasn't able to take it then. And I wish I would have been able to take it, but I didn't and I can't go back. I will say I learned some skills along the way and I did spend a little bit of time as a social media editor, but it was very laid back. I pretty much called the shots and decided what I wanted to do, but that's not what this is about. This (laughs) This podcast is not about my past work, which if you want to hear about that, maybe I'll talk about it in a future episode, but For now, this is just about interviewing, so let's get back to that. I found this job because it was referred to me by someone working with the hiring team at this organization, and that happened because my papa, who has been by my side since day one, has been sending out my portfolio to connections he has, and so I'm very grateful for that, and through that, I was able to get this email where she was like, hey, this position is opening up. I've seen your portfolio. If you would like to apply to it, here's a link. And we should set up a quick chat. So that's what I did. I applied. I put myself on her calendar for last week. And from there, we had a short like 15 minute conversation on the phone. And she set up my interview, which I had earlier this week. And like I said, Going into this, I was nervous a little bit, especially because it's marketing and that's not my forte, but really I was just excited. Like this moment could not come any sooner. The morning of, all I could focus on was this call, which wasn't going to be until 2 p.m., so (laughs) it was a little hard. And as you might have guessed by what I just said, it was not an in-person interview, which I might have liked more, but I am interviewing for a remote position, so it makes sense for it to be online, and I can't really complain about that. And luckily, the people who I was interviewing with, they have been working remotely for a while, and so they knew how to use Teams well, and it wasn't weird, because I've heard experiences from other people where they are interviewing for a job 
via Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever, and their interviewer, like, won't even look at them. Or you can see their interviewer, like, doing other things. Or just, like, abruptly leaving the call. There are lots of things. And so I was very lucky that the two women that I spoke with were very kind and also well-versed in what they were doing. And so I get into the call and I try not to be too early. That's the one thing, you know, you hear show up early to an interview. When it's on Microsoft Teams or anything like that, you don't want to show up too early. And then you're just like waiting in the lobby and it feels like you're putting pressure on them, sort of. So right at two o'clock, I hit the button to join the meeting And from there, surprisingly, I didn't just black out because sometimes with things like this, my brain just tries to preserve myself, I guess, from, I don't know, embarrassment or whatever. And I just like black out during the whole experience. I just talk and then afterwards can't remember anything. But lucky for you guys, that didn't happen this time. So the interview started with introductions and that's a good time to show your friendly personality if you have one. (laughs) For me, I am a very friendly person. I'm a people person. And so they were asking questions about me. I was asking questions about them. We were just hitting it off. Then comes the questions you're expecting like, so I've got your resume here. I've got notes from your phone screening with blah, blah, blah can you elaborate on this thing? And my biggest tip, like what I was thinking about the whole time is just to be authentic. You know, like I said, hopefully they're hiring for the person, not just the skills. So this is not a time to lie or to embellish too hard or anything like that. Play to your strengths, but don't be fake about it. Be authentically you and talk about your real experiences. And so if this is something that you struggle with, maybe think about that ahead of time because you can't possibly think of every single question they're going to ask you and an answer for it and like write them down somewhere or memorize them. That's just not going to work. Interviews are somewhat unpredictable in that way, but there are certain questions that you know are going to pop up in one way or another that you can prepare for ahead of time. So for me, I kind of had a gist based off the phone screening. So I prepared a little bit of my answers, but for the most part, I just try to treat it like a normal conversation. If someone is asking you about your job experience, like what are you going to tell them? Now, If what you're going to tell them is going to be overly critical or overly negative, maybe don't say that. (laughs) Try and keep things mostly positive, but still be real. And so if you don't have a lot of experience in something, you can say, this is what I have done pertaining to this field. This is some things that are not exactly that, but are relevant. But be honest and tell them that's the extent of my experience, you know? And something you could say after summarizing all your experience would be like, and I am very interested in exploring this area further or something like that. And I'm hoping that if it's a job that you're interviewing for, you are at least somewhat interested in that area and exploring more knowledge and more practice in that field. And if it fits, you could even throw in some sort of story about having to learn or adapt quickly in those skills prior, because that would show that if you're hired for this job, you will take on these responsibilities and adapt to them quickly, hopefully. But if you know that that's not your strength, maybe don't set expectations for yourself that are too high that you know would be difficult for you to meet because that's not a good look for you either. So that's what I did. I explained my experience and the steps that I'm currently taking to learn more and further my knowledge in those areas and also just expressed my interest in marketing, which I do have. And so 
the whole time I never felt like I was at a question where I was stuck or where I felt cornered or like I couldn't figure out a good enough explanation. And I think that's really in part because I had laid the foundation that no matter what, I'm going to be authentic. I'm not going to fake anything and I'm going to let them see who I really am and hopefully that's a person that they would want to hire. Now, I do have a few notes for myself, one of which being to prepare the questions I have for them ahead of time, which I know that that's something that you should do, but I was just so excited that I was finally getting an interview and trying not to think about it too much that I didn't do that ahead of time, and so that was the one part of the interview where I was like, oh yeah, I do need to come up with questions to ask them, but it's good to have a few just in your mind that are pretty much relevant to any job, like they're questions you would want to ask, but be prepared that some of them may have already been answered in your conversation. Because that's what happened to me is like, I have certain questions that I want to ask to any employer. Just so happens that some of them have already been answered in our conversation. And so I don't know if I can remember all the questions I asked, but I know I asked about one or two things that were specific benefits in the job description. So I was asking them if they had taken advantage of those, if certain things would count towards them and things like that. And I asked what tasks I could expect to be doing every week. And those had been answered vaguely before this. And it's also kind of difficult in the marketing field because we had already discussed like when you're working in marketing, every day is sort of different. But I was still able to ask that question. Like, I know every day is different, but I'm sure there are some weekly routine things that I can expect to have to do. And of course, they had an answer for that. So that was good. One thing I did not ask about because (laughs) I am scared to ask about it because I'm still unsure was about the salary. I had given a range and I did like sort of look up what to expect to be paid in this role at an entry-level position in the state that I'm in, stuff like that when I was choosing my salary range. Luckily, I didn't have to get into that in this interview and if they hadn't brought it up or set up another interview, which is what I'm going to talk about, I would have brought it up because it is something important. Like, don't take a job and don't leave an interview if you haven't discussed what you will be paid or discussed at least further steps that are going to be taken before you need to have that conversation. So, I didn't have to ask about it yet, so I still have time to think about that and research it, but I wanted to put that out there that it is important and I should have looked into it a little more, and I need to not be scared of asking, but it's kind of like, I know I don't need all the skills for this, and I know it's an entry-level position, and I've never had a job like this that pays like this, so I just don't really know what to ask for, but I'll figure it out before next week's interview, hopefully. We'll see. The way that it ended, I felt good about the interview. Like, I felt that I had answered the questions well. I felt that I was a decent fit for this role, at least, and that this job would be something fulfilling for me. And they said, don't necessarily expect anything this week, but next week, if we want to keep moving things further, we'll probably schedule another interview with a writing task and stuff like that because what I'm doing will have a lot of writing, which is another one of my strengths, so I'm glad about that. So maybe I'll have to give an update to you guys in the following weeks about this job, and in the meantime, I'm still applying to plenty of other jobs, and maybe I'll get another interview in there and I'll be able to talk about that too. But for now, as you guys know, this has been the only interview that I've done, and it went well. So I'm glad I don't have any, like, interview horror stories to tell right now, but I know that they exist and who knows, I might come across one someday and I guess I would make good podcast material. So I'm not hoping I have an interview like that, but if it happens, you best believe I'll be talking about it. But for now, 
You guys know this was my first quote unquote big girl interview. I've only had to interview for a job one other time in my life. I've had it very lucky and that was when I was still a teenager that was getting my first job as a freshman in college rolling ice cream, which I love that job and I'd love to talk about it maybe someday because I think it prepared me in a lot of ways and it's good to get a job like that before entering into the corporate world if that's something that you are wanting to do with your life because there are a lot of skills that you learn and I just so happen to have a really great job where I never had any nasty customer experiences and for the most part everyone on my team was a team player and we worked well together and my boss was amazing and it was just very fun but as far as that interview goes I showed up to the interview we asked some basic questions and it was like five minutes into it. He's like, yeah, you have the job. Let's fill out some paperwork. So on top of that being a very easy interview, that was years ago. And then right after that, as in like a week after that, I got offered a job at the dance studio that I'd been dancing at in high school. And she knew who I was. I knew her We had a good relationship as like mentor and student and she trusted me to take on some classes while she would be on leave. And then that grew into the job that I've had for the past almost four years leading up to this. And so I've had it very lucky, but at the same time, I feel like I missed out on some crucial life experience where I could have gone through the motions of these interviews beforehand and kind of tried things out, see what's stuck, see what interviews are all about and all that. But all that being said, the confidence that I brought coming into this interview was not all false or just a front because I did also have one mock interview during my capstone class in my last semester of college where I got to try interviewing for a job honestly very similar to this one. And it was a situation where, like, I gave her the job posting and we had to make cover letters for it and everything. And we had to come in to her office and have this mock interview. And at the end of it, she was like, that went very well. You nailed that interview. If I was hiring, I would have hired you. So that made me feel good. And I kind of had already felt that I was much more nervous (laughs) for some reason going into that mock interview than I was for this real one. But as I settled into the interview, and she had said this too, at first I was definitely nervous, but very quickly I settled into it and settled into my personality. And I really feel like that's why it went so well, because I felt at ease. I felt confident. And then now that experience led me to this one where I could go in with more confidence than I did the last one. And I'm hoping it just keeps going up like that. And so if confidence and speaking and answering questions are not your strong suits and they make you really nervous, I totally get that. And that's pretty standard for people, especially when it comes to interviewing for jobs. The one thing I can say, the one piece of advice I have is to just be yourself, lean into your personality, because eventually my hope is that you would find a job that fits your personality and that fits your strengths and that recognizes those through your answers and through the way that you present yourself. And so it's normal to be a little nervous, but try as hard as you can to ease into it. And if it's something that really panics you Don't be afraid to tell them that. They're going to be able to tell that you're nervous anyways. And and sometimes the interviewer is just as nervous as you are. So if anything, again, I feel like it shows honesty too at the beginning of the interview. Be like, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. It's so nice to meet you. I'm very excited to be interviewing for this position. So I might come across a little bit nervous or something like that. I don't really know, but Just the one takeaway I want you to have is to be authentic. Let your own personality carry you through the interview. So I hope that this episode didn't have too many tangents, even though it felt like it did. I guess I'll see that in editing. But 
For now, this has been Postgrad Processing. I'm your host, Michaela Graff, and I'll see you again next week with more stories and a lot more feelings. Stay cool. Thank you.